Doombots, it's time. T minus two weeks from the global launch of Marvel Future Revolution. You probably heard about it. Maybe you've seen some gameplay of it. What is it? The next two weeks or so before global launch, we're doing the soft launch recap. I'm going to talk about the game, the status of what's going on in the game, and most importantly, what you do with it. So starting off from right here, Marvel Future Revolution is a incredibly ambitious Marvel themed MMO for your phone. Beautiful gameplay, beautiful cinematics, great art, the whole nine. And like many MMOs or maybe closer ARPGs like Diablo in the past, there's a lot of characters to choose from, a lot of different types of characters that play very differently. You're going to have to figure out what your play style is, what you want to do. And we're going to try to figure that out for you. At the beginning of the game, you start with four character slots. Uh, you get to pick which four characters, if any, that you would like to work on. And for uh, in-game currency, you can unlock more character slots. You can also, at any point in time, go ahead and delete a character you've worked on to make room if the need be. We don't have to go into the detail right now. Right now, let's just look at the game. So I started with Storm. We'll talk about why I did that in another video, but for right now, let's look at Storm and look at the game itself. So, here it is, your home base, your hub, whatever you want to call it, Dalaran. This is where you load in every time you come in. Uh, this is the general area. You can walk around, explore, do whatever you like. This is the general HUD, too, the loadout, what you see when you load in. You're going to see your character level, hiding behind my goal you saw it was 100 already hp your stamina or mana if you're familiar with that uh, progress bars what channel you're in a map you can click on to see whatever the location is or any points you may want to go into controls for those playing on your phone and plenty of options that become pretty apparent as you play through the game most important things you're going to notice are right around here the event tab that tells you what you can do and what you can work on. The store, you'll be going here frequently even if you're not spending money. Mail, as time comes in and they send awards, plus anytime you claim something it's likely to be sent in mail. The direct to your character loading screen where you can check out your character, their stats, uh, their itemization, uh, their costumes and battle badges in this game. Costumes aren't cosmetic, it's their term for gear, like you'd go farm a boss in a World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy that dropped a piece of gear for you. That's basically what the costumes are in this game. Uh, the different cosmetics are kind of just cool features, but each costume set has its own little buffs, debuffs, potential to roll, a whole bunch of stuff for you to just kind of itemize as you're building out your character. Same thing with battle badges. These are accrued through gameplay and just give you stats that you can itemize and build your character the best way you know how. Same thing, one of the coolest features of this game is just the sheer customizability of the character. For all of the costumes that exist in this game, there are between 6 and 10 different sets of each costume or color combinations. You could just go out of your way, find whichever ones work the best for you and put them together. One of the coolest features of this game and one of the long-term fun things you can do is just grind to complete different costumes. Every set has multiple sets and two super secret rare sets. You just get over time. These don't necessarily drop, but uh, you do kind of craft them in a sense or other. We'll go into that in another video, but this is basically your hero information with the ability to check your stats and kind of itemize your character same thing here you have your inventory now every individual character has their own inventory there's a uh, global inventory we'll look at that in a second but you have your inventory uh, for every individual character and then you can of course pay in-game currencies to improve each individual character's storage capacity each inventory tab is divided by four this is the total inventory this is your basic stuff you pick up your potions your uh, your health pots you know any any materials you need to improve your character 
everything basically goes in here. The rest of the tabs are more specific. This is the battle badge tab. In here is where items will drop that you can use to itemize either this character or the rest of them. Uh, here are your cores. Cores go inside battle badges to improve them in one way or another. Don't worry about that right now. And of course, your costumes. Uh, this is where they will be stored as you pick them up. Nice little way to kind of sort through everything without scrolling for nine minutes or dealing with pretty much everything here. So you're going to spend a lot of times in these two screens. And the last we have is the everything screen. Everything screen has some of the stuff we've already seen. We have the hero screen. Hero info. We saw that. Skills. This is a list of all of the attacks your characters have. Every character has eight different ability classes. Not including their basic and their ultimate. And each ability class has four different options. So much customization available in this. We're going to have to go into each character individually. But there are a lot of options. Yes, you have to pay to unlock them and rank them up. Like you would in any other class. It's gold. In-game currency. Not... Uh, money, so don't worry about that. Uh, same thing, Omega cards, another itemization build that helps you build out characters. Enhanced potential. This is kind of where you're going to figure out what your character's about and what's important for your character. The first tab is pretty much the same for everybody, but as you go on, you'll see things like debuff accuracy, guard damage, cooldown decrease. These are the things that your character tends to need the most, and it's a really great way to start determining what's important for your character outside of the normal health and damage. Um, but every character is different. Uh, check them out whenever you're like, hey, I wonder what to do. Same thing, the core management. We already talked about how you can move these around. Specialization, its own absolute crazy Final Fantasy X style uh, grid that you can build towards. Uh, basically, every character has a, a, a path that immediately improves them and then a path that will improve them over time. You're very unlikely to have multiple full character builds. You're going to have a main and then maybe a couple alts you're working on for fun, if that. So uh, basically, it's kind of important to get a feel for where your character wants to go and not do what you see here, which is kind of spreading out in all other directions, unless you're testing stuff. But this is kind of where you're going to get a lot of cool abilities that you can activate, put on your character, and just make them stronger overall. And it's one of the few things you have complete control over in the game where you can determine where you're going as opposed to, like, trying to get RNG to drop an item for you. It's, it's a pretty reasonable setup. Uh, squad, this is just kind of stats and information that uh, you as your team get. Your squad is your team, uh, as opposed to, like, family if you played Black Desert Online. Uh, your squad is basically you, the player, the commander, the whatever you want to call it. Uh, weird naming, I know. Like, I'm squad Tony Scangeli in this game. But, uh, it, you know, whatever you upgrade, everybody in your entire squad, every character you have also upgrades. So, pretty reasonable there. Uh, card storage and regular storage. This is a little bit different. This is your shared storage. You have one for the items that your regular storage has. And then you have one just for the uh, Omega cards we already talked about. Basically, you can pay to upgrade these, uh, so you have the most storage. This is probably the best thing to actually upgrade, because you can store character-specific stuff in it, uh, if you're moving characters around or you need a little bit extra space. Uh, and you can store stuff that you don't quite want to get rid of, for one reason or another. Pretty reasonable, lets you save stuff that you might want to open at a later date. Uh, as of right now, plenty of stuff available to be stored, the only things you can't. You'll know immediately, so don't worry too much about them. But this is where the storages are for both of those. We've already seen the inventory. Headquarters is where we are in, in the current game state. Records. Now, this is what I really want to drive into everybody. So, Records has a couple of things that matter and then something that's completely useless. Challenges is great. It's how you can claim it's your dailies, basically. You have your dailies, and then these represent kind of like achievements almost, where the more you accomplish, the better stuff you get. Uh, you know, spend 64 million gold, check into the Alliance 50 times, game, I'm logged in 50 times yet, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, but this is where you can keep track of your uh, dailies. Your dailies give you a decent amount of character XP, decent amount of gold. Just do your dailies, right? No, nothing shocking here. Uh, collection is where you can keep track of what you've received. So, during the gameplay, there's things you could pick up. There's collectibles that are randomly located around. 
consumables. This is one of the first ones you're going to complete. Just because it's like, hey, did you complete all of the stuff you need to get? You're going to get these all the time. Omega cards, you can kind of keep track of which ones you've pulled so far. Same thing, for completing a collection, you get a decent chunk of little rewards. But the coolest thing here is you can track costumes. So, let's say I want to look at Spider-Man costumes. And uh, right at the bottom here, you can see some have seven. Bunch of different color schemes. The bottom color schemes of almost every set are the rare color schemes. So, if you want to see what standard issue color schemes are, they run across the line. But once you get here, you can start seeing a little bit cooler, kind of crazier costumes. They tend to have a little bit of a flair, uh, maybe something a little crazy about them. Uh, these are kind of the chase things you collect just to itemize and make your character look cool. And then you could kind of track everything else. But this is the coolest thing you can check. Uh, you can also see the, what the costumes do, too, from any character. You don't have to unlock the character. So as you're playing through, if you're like, hey, I wonder if I want to try Doctor Strange, you can kind of get an idea of, like, hey, which costumes do I need without worrying about, like, freeing a slot or anything like that. And the last thing that I can tell you right now, you will be doing yourself the best service in the world if you spend time here, is the activity log. Now... At the beginning of the game, you're not going to see everything in the activity lock. Uh, you're only going to see what you've unlocked to. Once you've finished a character, you will have access to all of these on that character. What you can see here is everything in the game. More or less. This tells you what rewards for every mission in the zone are. Both epic and then side missions. And if you think that the if you want to plan out a way to fast level... This is where you're going to go. This is the area you're going to check out on your alts and everything. You're going to see which items give the best possible drops. You're going to pick those up and you're going to move on. And you can do that on your first character to kind of plan out which, how fast you're going to get through the areas on your second, third, fourth, or however many characters you want to build. Most wanted. this is how you can track the characters you need to kill. Now, some characters are prime targets. They drop really good potential rewards based on how much damage you do to them no big deal right uh what it'll tell you though is the characters you have to beat in order to spawn that now in the early stages like new stark city these are very small maps not incredibly relevant but in some of the bigger stages if you notice hey i want to fight loki or if i'm looking to fight maestro arnim zola any of these characters you can just go here, check details. It'll tell you these are the two characters that have to go down in order for him to spawn in their place. Um, and gives you a little bit idea of location, where they tend to spawn. No big deal. And what they drop, if you're interested in seeing this. This drops high-grade Omega card boxes for Maestro. And what does he drop? Well, like we saw earlier, go to that collectible section. You can see right here where they drop, where everything comes from how to get them. So, if you're ever looking on how to get something in particular, don't ask World Chat. Never ask World Chat. Never ever talk in World Chat. In any game, ever. No one's there to help you. It's all Baron's Chat. Everyone wants to sing Miley Time. Do not go there. Everything's available in this game. Or go to your local streamer, YouTuber, comment below. You'll promise you'll get better answers than asking anybody in World Chat. Anyway, these are the information pieces that are among the most relevant. Uh, but an activity log alone will tell you almost everything you need to know, how to find them, and give you rewards as you progress through. The last part of this is the ranking system. You could just ignore this, right? This doesn't matter. The only people who care about rankings are the people at the top and the people who are just under the people at the top. But it does do a great thing for you as a player to kind of tone it down a little bit and say, hey, I'm way better than I was last week or whatever. So this is a great way to kind of track what's going on. Uh, these rankings are completely esoteric. They only matter to people who care about them, so don't worry about them. But if you do happen to care about your rankings, they are here for you to look at. Don't get bogged down in that. There's a lot of game in this game to play around. Don't worry about being the best at anything. Uh, then we have the arena. These are all the PvP game modes in the game. Um, Omega War and Dimension Duel are the ones you're going to be doing every day. Dark Zone, 
We'll get into it in a whole video. Don't worry about it. But these are the PvP game modes. Uh, this is basically a free-for-all. There will be some different game modes in the future, but right now it's basically just everyone melee, murder each other. Dimension Duel is a 1v1, kind of like an arena style. And Dark Zone is... We'll get into it later. Uh, and then we have Operations. These are the kind of stuff you do every day, right? Blitz is your daily dungeon crawl. You can go in with four people. Uh, the scaling difficulty is based on your level, but... They drop a little bit more gold, a little bit more squad XP, some resources. Shouldn't be anything crazy. Most Wanteds, uh, these are daily tracks. Every day, there's three people you can take down. If you don't like who shows up, or if you uh, logged in on a character that's not max level, you can log in on a character that is max level, re-roll them, and it'll give you the best possible kills for you on the day. Special Operations, this is a once-a-day attempt to just kind of fight through stuff. Uh, we'll show you guys this in different videos at the time, but these are part of your dailies. Uh, it has a chance to drop what's called regional gear. Regional gear is like super special gear. It never drops, but it has a chance to, and it's something fun to do. It's also the best way you can get something called Sin Particles. Sin Particles help you craft gear, kind of. Another conversation for another time, just letting you know what it is. Battle Challenge is your weekly tower. Just go in, slap things around, move along. I tend to do it the day, last day of the week anyway, but yeah, just something to do. You know, challenge yourself up, get a little bit more rewards. Not unreasonable, but pretty fun overall. And then raids. Raids are how you get your specialization materials. They change every day. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday are these two. Sunday are these two. They might move them around. They might shake them. But ultimately, this is how you get your different uh, color material that you use and the harder the raid is as you can see the more materials you get just a quick little note you're gonna be living in challenge for a while because uh extreme will kill you so don't try to get clever and try to get carried because people will just watch you die and then quit and not do it because no one will really carry you unless you have friends or something but you want to be doing this with a group of people anyway this is not a very fulfilling solo experience unless you just like to grind then that's up to you but don't worry the goal is of course to get harder and harder raids done so you can get more and more materials you know how the drill works surprise it's like every other game uh last you have alliance alliances are incredibly important to the game every day you come in you donate to your alliance and as a result your alliance gets stronger uh you can complete quests every week co-op missions etc etc that will help you uh advance your alliance gain more resources your alliance will give you slight increases over time on just generic stats as you go so it all helps you there and then of course you have access to the alliance shop which will every week stock full of stuff that you want to buy pretty much all the time and it's just regular in-game gold that you have to spend you don't have to worry about spending any money on it but overall this is probably one of the better shops in the game so getting into a good alliance or more importantly an active alliance is going to help you significantly more than if you were to just just show up and, and just kind of float around. And you don't have to get into an amazing alliance. As a matter of fact, if you try to get into an amazing alliance, it's incredibly likely that you're going to have to be either more competitive than you inherently feel like you're going to or be moved around a lot. So just find a place that seems like home to you that, with people that are going to play with you. Uh, as you level up your alliance, you gain more and more slots, as you can see. We have two slots open right now. We can have people come in anytime we want. It doesn't matter. It's all about fun. It's all about growing, and we're growing at a reasonable rate. That's how you should heal another two. That's basically uh, a quick look at the game, not the gameplay. You can look at gameplay anywhere. We're going to have plenty of gameplay coming up. So hopefully this kind of demystified a little bit of the game for you. Hopefully you have a little bit of a better understanding of what you're going to be looking at as you play. Um, obviously your character will have great abilities pop up on the screen that will allow them to control flight or web swinging or whatever along the lines there's plenty of buttons that are going to be trust me the tutorials are going to teach you all of this i'm not going to waste your time i just wanted to show you where everything that you need to know is hopefully give you a little bit of advantage now if you stick around uh for the next couple of weeks you're going to see a new video every day going over individual game modes how to itemize your characters what characters are the best what character you should work on how the characters build. I get my advice from the same people everyone else does. We all talk, we figure it out, we figure out that some characters have 
one really good build and a bunch of bad ones. Some characters have three totally reasonable builds. Just like any type of ARPG, there's always a best, and then there's optimal, and then there's good. And we're going to figure them out together. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have anything specific you want to know about that I haven't mentioned, comment below. Let me know. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I will catch you later.